What is going on guys, Jonathan here with TLD with a performance benchmark video covering the late 2012 27 inch iMac equipped with the top end GTX 680MX with 2 gigs of video memory. So for this video we're going to be doing a couple different things, one of which is enabling GPU or CUDA acceleration in After Effects CS6. Now as a quick note, you do need to be running After Effects version 11.0.1 or higher in order to get this function to work. So if we head up to After Effects and then go to Preferences and Previews, we can go ahead and check out the GPU information. Of course, this is the GTX 680MX. And then right there under Ray Tracing, we're going to go ahead and select the GPU. And that's going to allow it to do a bulk of the work so we can really focus on it, stress it out, and kind of assess how well and how fast it performs. Now there are a few different steps in order to enable this. It's not going to work out of the box, so to speak, and I will give you guys a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that at the end of the video. But for now, I really want to focus on the actual benchmark, the numbers, for those of you guys who are just interested in sheer performance. So we'll go ahead and click OK, get out of this, OK again, and I'm going to go ahead and play this for you. This is the end result of the project, and it doesn't look that crazy or that taxing. It's just a little five-second clip. But if you head over to the render queue, you can see it took about 9 minutes and 42 seconds to complete. Now real quick, what you guys are seeing right here is a screenshot of the actual render taking place. If you head up to the top into iStat menus, that's what I use to monitor everything. You can see the RAM's really not being pushed, the CPU's really not being maxed out at all. But if you go down to the video card, you can see it's really, really, really being pushed to its limits. So what I did was run the exact same test on my 2012 Retina MacBook Pro that is equipped with a GT650M with one gig of video memory, and it took nearly three times the amount of time to complete the exact same render as opposed to the iMac. Now I did go ahead and run these multiple times just to ensure accuracy. The MacBook Pro was consistently just under 30 minutes, whereas the iMac was consistently just under 10 minutes, so there was a huge difference in performance for this test. Now I will also be doing my best to bring you guys performance comparisons between the GTX 680MX that you guys see right here, compared to the 675MX, which is actually the step down, and kind of really determine if it's worth the upgrade. So if you guys are looking forward to that, let me know by hitting that like button. And also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. So if you guys came here solely for performance numbers and benchmarks, there you have it. You can see the iMac does perform extremely well, much better than the MacBook Pro in regards to 3D rendering as well as GPU acceleration. Now if you happen to own an NVIDIA-based Mac with one gig of VRAM or higher, or maybe a Hackintosh with something similar, and you want to know how to enable GPU acceleration, Let's go ahead and continue on to part two. So jumping over to part two, quick shout out to Mike Gentilini Jr. over at vidmuse.com. Hopefully I did pronounce that right. He has a fantastic walkthrough on how to enable this, and he actually has the instructions that we'll need to complete this over on his website, and I'll have that linked down below. And then real quick, just want to give a quick shout out to teddygage.com. He is actually the creator of the benchmark project that we used earlier in this video. So if you guys want to download this for yourselves, I will have a link to that also down below. Now jumping back over to After Effects, I went ahead and turned back the clock a little bit. So prior to this, if you had not enabled these steps, if you went up to Preferences, Previews, and we went back up to the GPU information, down over by Ray Tracing, you can see the GPU is grayed out, does not allow us to select it, and it says GPU not available, incompatible device, or CUDA driver. So the first step to enable this is we're going to get out of this, press OK, OK. We'll go ahead and close down After Effects. We're going to go back to Safari because the absolute first step we need to do is download the CUDA driver for Mac. Now, as of this video, the current up-to-date driver is version 5.0.37. Obviously, that could change if you're watching this in the future. So make sure to use that link so you're able to get the most up-to-date driver. Now, I had previously already downloaded the file. If you were doing so for the first time, it should appear in your downloads folder. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to that file. I already have it placed right here. We're going to double click on the DMG. That's going to open up the package. And then we're going to double click that one more time. Next, we have the Welcome to CUDA 5.0 installer. We're going to go ahead and click Continue. I believe it's only about a 200 meg installation, 202 megabytes. So it's not going to take that long. And you actually don't need to restart to complete this installation. So once that is complete, we can go ahead and exit the installer, go ahead and click the X, exit out of this, and we're going to go back to vidmuse.com because that is where Mr. Mike Gentilini has the downloadable instructions. So go ahead and again, download those to your download folder. Again, I have them conveniently placed over here. We're going to go ahead and open that up. Now we're going to actually need to open up Terminal. So the easiest way to do that is go up to Spotlight, type in Terminal, and there she is. Now, since we are doing this for After Effects, obviously, we're going to follow the After Effects instructions. We're going to need to copy this little snippet right here, like so, Command-C to copy. And we're going to paste it into the terminal, 
press enter. That is command V by the way, just for a quick shortcut on how to paste. Enter, and that's gonna actually pull out the exact name of the video card. So you guys can see right here, GeForce GTX 680 MX. You're gonna need to hold on to this because it is case sensitive. From there, we're gonna go ahead and press command and that's gonna open up a new instance of terminal. And then we're gonna go ahead and go over to the second line right here, copy that again, command C. We're gonna paste that with command V. We're gonna hit enter and it's gonna ask you to enter your password. So go ahead and enter whatever your password is. And you can see we have a very short list of supported video cards. So what we're gonna do is go back to that first terminal. We're gonna go ahead and copy that, go back to the second terminal again, just hit enter just so you can create some space. We're gonna go up. And then we're going to copy and paste, or actually paste, command V again, the exact name, the GeForce GTX 680 MX. We're not quite done yet. We actually have to save this so we can move on to the next step. So next, we're going to press Control X to exit. It's going to ask us, do you want to save this? We're going to hit Y for yes. And then one last thing, we're going to hit Enter or Return uh, so we can actually save this final step. So next, we're going to go and open up After Effects down here. Let it load up real quickly. And uh, just for this reference, we're not going to need to open a project or anything. I just want to show you that it is enabled now. So close this out, go up to After Effects, Preferences, Previews one last time. And if we go over to the GPU information, ray tracing, we can now select the GPU. So that's pretty much it. You are ready to go. Uh, remember, not every Mac is going to work on this, but if you do have a latest gen Mac with NVIDIA card with one gig of video memory or more, you can do this and you can test this out yourself. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit that like button, favorite, all that good stuff does help the channel out. If you guys did miss it, I also have a video covering upgrading the memory on this bad boy to 32 gigs of RAM. That is linked right here. You guys can check that out, and I will see you guys later.